What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrader.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out the NOCO Genius Pro 25. It's gonna be a smart charger and battery maintainer. So you can hook this up to just a standard battery that's sitting around the garage all winter, maybe a vehicle that you left set, or just a battery you're trying to repair. You can hook this up to it and it'll bring it back to life. So for example, it's warmed up outside. It's time to start cutting grass again after winter's over. So I got this hooked up to my battery on my lawnmower to see where my battery's at. That way it's fully charged when it's time to cut the grass. So right away, let's check out how it works. So we got the two clamps right here. They're pretty sturdy clamps, I like that. They have a lot of resistance, so that means it's gonna hold on even if the terminals are kind of small, like on this lawnmower battery. Now when you go to hook it up, make sure you do positive first, and then negative. And with our clamp set up, now it's time to plug in our charger. Make sure you plug in the NOCO Genius 25 Pro after you've hooked up the battery clamps. Do not do it before. Now let's check it out. So with it hooked up, you see it's got it on 12 volts. You can change that mode with that button. And now we have the indicator as it's seeing where the battery's at. So it's gonna start to blink slowly to let you know if it stays there, but give it a little bit because it could fully go up as it sits here. The first one's solid and not fading in and out. So that means it at least has 25%. Now it's seeing that it's at 50%, that's just fine. It's still glowing here. You can hear it kick on on its own. I didn't have to push any buttons for it to do this. So we're seeing if it's at 75%. We're almost 100% charged. It's just checking out that battery and its health. We'd have indicators here to show us if there was something wrong. It looks like we might be close to 100%. We did have this on here a little bit today just to test it out. It looks like it's holding its charge and yeah, we're good. It's at 100%, so the lawnmower is good to go. Now let's check out our golf cart. It's sat over the winter just right here. Its battery isn't as new as the one in the lawnmower, so I'm kind of interested to see how this one held up. The side post is a good example of these being strong clamps because there's not a lot for them to grab onto. As you can see, they hold on there pretty good, so I really like the tension in those clamps. I know I mentioned it before, but it's important for those side posts. Here's the 10-foot extension cord that goes to the jumper cables. So we were able to plug in and use that outlet towards the house and reach all the way to the battery of the golf cart. That way I didn't have to try and push it more towards the house. It could just stay right there and I could trickle charge it until it was full to go use. Now with those connected, I'll go ahead and plug in our charger down here at the outlet. Now it kicked on automatically. You can see it's doing the same thing. It's fading in and out. We don't have a solid light yet to see where the battery's at. So far, it doesn't say it's damaged or anything, so that's a good thing. We just kind of have to hang out and see what it does. Well, I'm kind of surprised. It got all the way up to green. It's still flashing, so it's not saying it's 100% yet, but that's pretty good for sitting here all winter. This battery's a lot older than the one in the lawnmower, so good to know that it's got a decent charge on it. Now we know the battery's fine, let's take the golf cart back up to the garage for the summer. Back up in the garage, you can see this is the carrying case it comes with, it all fits inside there. It's very nice, it's got a padded outside that holds up. It's like we got a little scuffs on there, but that's just from the bench there, I can wipe that off. It's got a heavy duty zipper, it goes all around the outside. We'll open it up, and you see even if it's bouncing around in the golf cart, it was gonna bother at all because it's got the molded inside so it sits exactly where it's supposed to, no movement there. We have a zipper pocket to hold our, all our cables. We have the jumper cables that you saw me use earlier. We have our US plug we're gonna be using today to plug this into the wall. It's kind of tangled in there. I didn't put it in there nice and neat. And then the other cords in there are gonna be for other countries. We've got the Australian, European, and UK plugs. So if you need those, you got them as well. It comes with some screws. If you wanna permanently mount this somewhere, you can mount it and keep it in there. Even if you look at the jumper cables themselves, you can see you can undo this and disconnect the jumper. If you wanna leave it permanently on the golf cart or the vehicle over the winter, you wanna mount it there because you need it to maintain that battery all the time, you can permanently attach that to the battery. So that's a nice option you have here. We're just gonna leave it as the clamps because I have a battery sitting here that we're gonna see where it's at. It's been sitting here for a while over the winter as well, not connected. So let's see what health it has. Take a look at this battery. We're gonna do the same thing we did for the last one. Give it a second and see where it's at as far as the charge goes. 
But while it's doing that, I can talk a little bit more about the cables. They also have protection against reverse polarity. So if you were to take these and hook them up the wrong way, it would alert you and tell you to disconnect it. So it wouldn't kick on and it wouldn't damage the battery or the charger. While it's charging, we can go over some of the interface here. You see the alerts up to the top. That one's gonna be that if the voltage is wrong on the battery, it's gonna let you know something's not right. You're gonna have to change it. That means hitting the button down here to change it to a 12 volt. Maybe you hooked it up to a six volt and held the mode button instead of letting it decide itself. That kicks on, you can change it. That one's gonna be a damaged battery. This one we just saw, it's reverse polarity. And then this one's gonna be if the battery's overheated, you can disconnect it as well. Coming along the side, you can see that it's already selected the 12 volt for this battery, so it already knows what it is, but it also is gonna work with 12 volt AGM batteries and also lithium batteries as well. You have the options down here. We got a 24 volt lithium, 24 volt AGM, 24 volt standard, six volts lithium, six volts AGM, and then six volt standard there as well. So those are all your options that it can figure out when you hook it up to that battery or you can hold the mode to force it. There is a force mode as well. And when you do that, that's gonna force it to just charge that battery. So if you hook it up to the battery and it's so dead that it doesn't even sense the battery, you can put it in force mode. And what that is gonna do is just force a charge slowly to try and repair that battery or get it to do something. Now you don't wanna hook up the battery this way, but I wanted to show you that it does protect against reverse polarity. So we're gonna hook up the negative, the positive, and the positive, the negative. I do not advise this, but nothing's gonna happen because it protects it. That's the alert right there, letting you know you got them mixed up. You see that it does not kick on. There's no sparks. It's protected against that. So it's just kind of nice if you're in a hurry and you hook up something wrong, it'll alert you instead of damaging the battery. Another thing about the cables is it's gonna be five and a half feet of length, which is fine with this, this battery that's right here up on the table. It's close to this outlet. We don't need much more than that. But that extension is gonna be 10 feet long, so we can add to it if whatever we need to charge is farther away from an outlet. Another cool thing is it's got a built-in fuse here to protect any surges that happen. So it's got that to help protect your battery and the charger itself. Looking here at the bottom for the repair mode, you can see that's six volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt repair. And what that does is if the battery is damaged, it's not lasting as long as it used to, it is built to break that down and try and rebuild that to give it a full charge again. There's another button here that's the five amp button. So you can push that, it will drop the current that's going into the battery. So there's just gonna be a lower, slower charge if you need to do it that way with your battery. One of the nice things about the NOCO Genius Pro 25 is it's got multi-stage charging algorithm that charges two times faster than regular chargers without overcharging it or damaging your battery. That's when you hook it up, it analyzes it right away, and that way it gives it that customized charge it needs to get it charged as quick as you can. It can charge 6-volt and 12-volt batteries up to 1,000 amp hours or 24-volt batteries up to 500 amp hours. The battery types supported are wet cell, gel cell, enhanced flooded, calcium, maintenance free, AGM, and lithium ion. Now the lithium ion batteries must have battery management systems. The whole NOCO charger is going to be out of durable resin, so it's going to be rugged and waterproof. So that's going to be good for onboard and offboard applications. It's going to hold up, like I said, when I threw it in the golf cart, even though it had the protective case, even if it was on the back part of the golf cart, it bounced around, wouldn't have hurt it at all either. It being here on the shelf, it's just fine. You know, it's not going to get damaged very easily. It's definitely going to hold up. Now, just another application it works for is, of course, it works on your car, your vehicle batteries. So I got an SUV pulled in. This is my car. I just wanted to check the battery to see how it's doing. Looks like it's green. We got all full green oh that one's still blinking a little bit we're seeing if it's at 100 percent or not and next to that green light is going to be the optimization light so i'm going to let it sit here for a second because i know my battery's got to be better than the one in the lawnmower and the golf car that sat outside all winter to see if those optimization lights come on or not well it turns out my battery isn't fully charged like the lawnmower or the golf cart for some reason so we still are in that charging mode but what happens is the lights turn off when it's fully charged. This one will stay solid green. The other ones behind it drop out. Overall, I really like the NOCO Genius Pro 25. It worked well on everything we tested on the day. It was nice to be able to check the batteries and make sure they're healthy. And if they weren't, I could have done something to repair it. Luckily, they were all fine today, so I couldn't show you how to repair them. But 
The cables work really good. They got a good snap, really good resistance. They like really clamp on the side post. My car's still charging now, so it's on there. And it, those are hard to keep those clamps on there. So you got the solid clamps with the built-in fuse. It all plugs into this. It comes with a carrying case, so you can keep it all together. That's another thing I really like too. You know, these aren't jumper cables, but when you have jumper cables in the back of your car, they can kind of sprawl out everywhere if they don't have a bag. At least that's what happens in the back of my car. But this one has a nice case and everything can stay exactly where you need it, when you need it, for whatever you need to hook it up to. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this helped.